Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> everybody what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and we've got some more news we're catching up on from the last couple weeks so this one is kind of like two news stories in one so Slash was interviewed by Loudwire and for some reason he was asked about Dave Mustaine and Megadeth so if you guys remember there's some clips from MTV from back in the late 80s of Slash and Dave Mustaine drinking together at a bar and I think Duff McKagan's there plus there's uh, some photos of Dave Mustaine at the uh, Monsters of Rock Festival with the members of Guns N' Roses. I guess they were headlining, or they were on the same bill. And uh, Slash was asked by Loudwire whether he would ever collaborate with Dave Mustaine. So Slash said, I don't see myself guessing, guesting on a Megadeth song. I don't think it would work in the context of what Megadeth does, he admitted. Now Slash did jam with Dave Mustaine back in the 80s, but I don't think anybody's actually heard that collaboration. Now Mustaine was asked about Slash's comments. Slash kind of made it seem like, okay, he doesn't really have the chops to play with Megadeth or just his style is completely different. So Dave Mustaine responded. He basically complimented Slash. And you know, both these guys are friends. Uh, Dave Mustaine said Slash is a terrific talent and I couldn't, uh, and I disagree wholeheartedly with what he said, that he couldn't play on a Megadeth record. He's a brilliant guitar player, Mustaine told uh, Loudwire, you know, about a day later. He explained, I basically play in a pentatonic scale, and that's like the go-to blues player scale, and mentioned that he's tried to surround himself with really, really good players over the years. Now, there was a new interview that Bumblefoot did uh, regarding Guns N' Roses. Now, he hasn't been doing a lot of press talking about Guns N' Roses. It kind of seems like he's still bitter about the breakup. So he talked to Music Radar, and he told them that the Guns N' Roses show was not about technical stuff. It was more about delivering the melodies and riffs in the right pocket with the right feel. My aim was to give people the experience that they came there to get. That's what you, that's what you should want to do. And it can be just difficult or require just as much focus despite not having super fast playing in a weird time signature. I was thinking more about bending in the perfect way to create the hair of tension before it hits the pitch or maybe my vibra vibrato and anything else to nail the phrasing. It wasn't about fast scales. That was the least of my worries in that situation. Different aspects of my playing are at the forefront and more blatant in different bands, but my overall mindset is that there's always plenty to nail. Because Something it's that the way you play it and what you do with notes on that count. Is there an emotional connection? If you think you're above that, you're going to suck. So during the rest of the conversation, Bumblefoot talked about developing technique in general, saying that obviously with the guitar being a physical instrument, it's all about developing technical precision, but it's easy for that to become the focus like a sport. We really mustn't forget that it should be about the music and expressing what you feel onto those strings, not competing with anything or anyone else. As crazy as it sounds, listen to the music in your head or in your heart or wherever it is inside you and hum it. Try to be there with that note first inside and then let it out on the guitar rather than trying to be faster than the next guy. We also had an interview recently with Alice Cooper. So he gave an interview to Up Rocks where he talked about his career and briefly discussed what it was like touring with Guns N' Roses who were up and coming in 1987. So at that time he was uh, sober and Guns N' Roses were the hottest new band. Of course they were not sober. So he said, however, the article said, however, his newfound sobriety was put to the test just four years later in 1987 when he decided to bring a new hard partying band from Los Angeles named Guns N' Roses out on the road with him as the opening act. Guns were on the verge of breaking out into the mainstream with their debut album Appetite for Destruction and their dalliance with whiskey and heroin was already legendary. I was lean, mean, and sober, ready to kick everyone's butt, and our opening act was unbelievable, Cooper recalled. Nevertheless, the experience turned into a positive one. They actually helped us because they really challenged us. They really challenged us to be a better band, and it worked. Can you imagine Guns N' Roses going on, and then Alice, and Coop Alice Cooper? That's quite a show. So Guns N' Roses, this past a couple weeks, they released a rehearsal video back from the Edmonton show that I went to. So it was kind of just a sped up uh, rehearsal video where Axel actually showed up. Now this was the first show where Guns N' Roses performed Wichita Lineman and performed I Feel Good as part of the Not In This Lifetime tour. They played I Feel Good before, but this was the first time that Axel performed it with this lineup. And you can see Axel kind of pacing back and forth, the band's kind of chatting with one another. And a lot of people thought at this show that Madagascar was going to be premiered as part of the Not In This Lifetime tour. Now that wasn't the case. But it's a pretty funny video to watch because you can see them like playing to a dark stadium like the night before the show. And I remember reading on Reddit the day before the show that somebody who lived near the stadium said, 
hey, it sounds like they're playing Wichita Lineman. And I'm like, what the hell song is that? And I'm like, oh, it's probably not right. It's probably Madagascar instead. But how wrong was I? So Slash went on to give an interview to Yahoo about his childhood growing up around David Bowie, Neil Young, and others. So according to the article, they said, it seems Slash, the famously top-hatted aviator-shaded Guns N' Roses guitar god who's about to release the album Living the Dream, his third album with his other band, Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators, was almost literally born to be a rock star. As the son of artist Anthony Hudson, who created album covers for Neil Young and Joni Mitchell, and costumer Ola Hudson, who worked and briefly dated David Bowie, he grew up surrounded by rock and roll role models. The coolest of the cool, but interestingly, he didn't pursue music himself until he was a teenager, and guitar wasn't the first choice of instrument. He said, it, Slash said, it's funny because I grew up in a world, the rock legend whose real name is Saul Hudson, tells Yahoo Entertainment. I grew up in that very bohemian artistic environment, tons and tons of music. I was never aspired to be a musician, but I love listening to records. I love going with my parents to the Troubadour and the Forum and this and that. So I love music and I was fascinated. Like if you go to a gig and you see them putting up gear, I was completely mesmerized. But I didn't think about an instrument until I was sort of accidentally picked up the until I accidentally picked up the guitar when I was about 15. It was right before my 15th birthday and then it, everything changed. So I guess I, I was groomed for it, but I just didn't know. Slash also recalled David Bowie coming over to his home when Ola and Bowie were a little item for a while. When his mother, who died in 2009, was designing outfits for Bowie's Thin White Duke era. She did some of the coolest stuff, I have to say. The whole thing with the suits and everything, he definitely looked good, Slash chuckles. A-list rockers like Bowie understandably made a lasting impression on Slash. Now, a couple weeks ago, Guns N' Roses announced that they were going to be having a drawing contest. So if you guys wanted to submit uh, an illustration for the Appetite for Destruction reissue, you could win some prizes, including the Super Deluxe Edition. And I guess each week they were going to be showing off the different winners. So the first week's winner was revealed, and that was uh, this drawing here. Now, some people noted that uh, it was censored from the original artwork. So they had shown, like, I guess, a little bit of nudity or something like that. And then I guess whenever Guns N' Roses published it, they, they blurred it up or they kind of altered it. So every week they're going to be announcing a winner. So uh, this one's pretty good that I've seen. They've already announced a second week winner, which I'll cover later this week. I thought this was better than the second week's winner by, by quite a bit. We also had an interview with the a Dead Daisies member who talked about hearing about the Guns N' Roses reunion. So if you guys remember, Richard Fortas and Izzy Reed were both in the Dead Daisies before the Guns N' Roses reunion was announced. So John Karabi uh, was interviewed on the Appetite for Distortion podcast by Brando. And he was asked about Dizzy and Fortas leaving the band for Guns N' Roses at the Not In This Lifetime tour. So he also said at the time when Izzy Stradlin was rumored to be part of the lineup, he was unsure if he'd be back with Guns N' Roses and with Izzy's possible return. So he wasn't sure if Richard would be back, if Izzy was going to be coming back as well. So according to the interview, he said, I think there were rumblings obviously about it prior to them telling us but they couldn't really tell us because they didn't know totally what was Izzy going to come back. I think Dizzy was pretty much because he was with GNR back in the day. So I think Dizzy was kind of guaranteed a slot, but uh, Richard wasn't sure if Izzy was going to come back or not. It was never really discussed. And then finally he just said, Hey, we got the phone call and GNR is going to do this huge thing with Duff and Slash and we're going back. He also went on to say, to be honest with you, I was sad to see them go because I loved working with them. But at the same time, I can relate to this because I went through the same thing with Discreet. I was in a great band. I was having fun. The band was awesome, but I got a call to join Molly Crew, And even the guys in the band were like, you're crazy if you don't do this. So I get it. It was definitely a huge, huge opportunity for those guys to go back and have some fun. And speaking of Dizzy Reed, he gave an interview to the Nothing Shocking podcast. And according to Blabbermouth, who transcribed it, Dizzy talked about his role in Guns N' Roses and what keeps him going on the road. So on how important it is for him to have an extra outlet, like his solo band, when Guns N' Roses is off the road, Dizzy said, I know what my role is within Guns N' Roses and I'm very content and happy with that and I'm grateful and thankful I've had the opportunity over the years to be part of that. But as a musician, and as an artist, I think it's important to have an outlet to go to. There's other things I can do and there's songs I want to sing and other things I want to do and it gives me an outlet to do that and that's great. But the number one priority is always Guns N' Roses, and I'm ready to do that when they need me. And I'm thankful and grateful that they're cool with me doing other things like I have been doing. He talked about his preference for touring in terms of where he plays and how much time he spends on the road. 
Dizzy said, endless touring, that's my preference. That's how I roll. I'll, t I'll take whatever I can get because there's been times in my life and my career where there was nothing. So if it's available, I'm going to do it. That's what I prefer. He also discussed what keeps him going, getting what keeps him from getting burnt out and touring after spending months on the road. He said, "Jägermeister, actually, the real answer to that problem is all I know how to do. It's my job, and that's and I'm past the way. I'm past the point of no return, like way past. There's nothing else I can do. And these days, you don't really make a lot of money selling records, if any. You really got to go out and play in front of people. And I feel like that's what I was born to do. I've been doing it my whole life since I was 10 years old, so that's how I do it." And if I start to get burnt out sometimes, I do all we do. We just travel. Traveling starts. Dizzy basically said that, you know, it could be worse. It could be in a coal mine somewhere doing a different kind of job. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you love GNR and want to stay up to date on the latest news. And go visit us over at GNRcentral.com. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Right now. What's going on? It's Alex Cross from Pokers and Blow, and you're watching GNR Central. Right on.